Clownfish In the wild, you'll find all manner of bizarre and freaky creatures. Ones with spikes, tendrils, horns, and many other kinds of quirks and oddities. But even with all these unique animals, you'll be hard-pressed to find one equally as perplexing as the clownfish. Depending on its species, anemone fish or clownfish are overall orange, yellow, or blackish in color, many possessing white bars or patches. Clownfish are omnivorous and primarily eat zooplankton on the sea floor. The largest an anemone fish can reach is a length of 17 centimeters, or 6.7 inches, while the smallest barely achieve 8 centimeters. These colorful bright creatures have taken to the warmer waters of India, the Red Sea, and of course, the Great Barrier Reef. While most animals have a sort of restricted distribution, anemone fish are wider spread, typically living at the bottom of shallow seas, sheltered reefs, or in thinly filled lagoons. They'll always take refuge in what's called a sea anemone. Anemone fish and anemones have a symbiotic and mutualistic relationship, one providing many benefits to the other. The sea anemone protects the clownfish from predators, as well as providing food through the scraps left from the anemone's last meal and the occasional dead tentacle. In return, the clownfish defends the anemone from its predators and parasites. In a group of clownfish, a strict hierarchy exists. The largest and most aggressive female is found at the top, and only two anemone fish, a male and a female, are allowed to reproduce. Anemone fish are sequential hermaphrodites, meaning they develop into males first, and when they mature, they become females. Clownfish will lay eggs on any flat surface close enough to their host homes, and depending on their species, they can lay upwards to 100 or even a few thousand eggs. The male parent will guard the eggs until they hatch about 6 to 10 days later. Anemone fish colonies usually consist of the reproductive male and female, and a few male juveniles which help tend to the colony. The reproductive cycle of anemone fish is often correlated with the moon's phases. Rates of spawning for anemone fish peak around the first and third quarters of the moon. The timing of this spawn means that the eggs hatch around the full moon or new moon periods. In terms of parental care, male clownfish are often the ones responsible for looking after the eggs. Male anemone fish care for their eggs by fanning and guarding them for six to ten days until they hatch. Females, however, display generally less preference for parenting than males. All this suggests that males have an increased parental investment towards eggs, juxtaposed to their female counterparts. In closing, historically, the anemone fish has been one of the most iconic animals, becoming almost synonymous with the ocean itself. That's quite a feat. But a lesser-known endeavor that these fish overcome each and every day is that of the chaos of the ever-changing wilderness. In our lives of technology, medicine, science, space, and quantum mechanics, the unknown has slowly become a fear of the past. But even with all this, if there's one thing to take away from all of this, it would be that color just doesn't matter. Color just doesn't matter.